So we're wrapping up the Alive in Massar course by thinking about how we can use whatever we are in, whether it is celebration or tribulation, in order to bring about some reformation. As we do what Messiah Yeshua first called his followers to do, which was to let your light shine before men so they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven which the first believers did to great effect. First, as they freely celebrated their new life in Yeshua by praising God and having favor with all the people. And then after the persecution began by continuing to witness in the face of tribulation, effectively becoming the light to the nations that God had called Israel to be to set the story rolling of how the influence of what would become the Christian church, despite all its inadequacies, would change the course of the world. This being God's original intention for Israel, to whom he gave a very particular opportunity through which to influence the nations of the world. Through the location of the Promised Land, having desert to its east and the Mediterranean Sea to its west, which made it a land bridge between Africa, Asia and Europe, and led to one of the most important trade routes running right through it that Isaiah 8 referred to as the way of the sea. So, by being at a crossroads of the nations, Israel had huge opportunity to influence those from the nations that passed through by revealing the light of the God of Israel to them. So they could then carry it back to the nations that they came from, that it might get seen there and change how things were there. The process of such influence being how God intended all reformation to be produced, whether great or small, to make things more like what he'd want them to be like. As Yeshua pictured through deeds that are sufficiently visible that they prompt others to reflect them, possibly to multiply them, and even for them to become like a rolling snowball of glory being given to our Father in heaven, which is what happened at the 16th century Reformation through the celebration that followed from Luther's rediscovery that by grace you have been saved through faith. When people who previously believed salvation depended upon their works were no longer terrified that their works would not be enough to save them from hell. The impact of the society of its day being massive and leaving a legacy that's lasted to this day, not least through the Protestant church that it gave to us, but which despite all that it achieved was still a very incomplete reformation as it lacked the second key of what enabled the first believers to turn the world upside down begging the question of what might follow if the church were to generally rediscover this other key. And that is, of course, God's continuing purposes through Israel. However, whether or not this ever happens, the challenge to us is how we can harness the distinctive equipping that goes with that calling so that we can do the sort of things that will enable those who are looking for some light in the darkness to find it. And also to demonstrate that just as our sin doesn't have to have the last word, neither do our circumstances. Indeed, that the spiritual atmosphere that surrounds us as God's children can be influenced because of who we are in Messiah Yeshua the impact of which may reach much further than we can ever see, as God's purpose through us is that through Messiah's community, the multifaceted wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places, which is in keeping with the eternal purpose that he carried out in Messiah Yeshua, our Lord. And this means that even if our deeds are not greatly noticed on earth, the forces of spiritual wickedness in the heavenly realms still have to witness them, 
and to see through them that light cannot be overcome by darkness, even now, let alone when Messiah Yeshua returns to take up his reign of righteousness and justice through which everything will be reformed, so that of the increase of his government and shalom there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and uphold it through justice and righteousness from now until forevermore. So the process of letting our light shine in a way that can lead to some sort of reformation is about turning the spiritual warfare that's often seen as a defensive action into a proactive action as we do things which in some way picture the presence of the future. The importance of which means that we need to be at the best point we can be to do this. Free of everything replacement theology has drawn us into through the church's mistaken belief that it has replaced Israel in God's purposes. And having a firm grasp of who we actually are in Messiah Yeshua, who came as the Jewish Messiah to the Jewish people, and who, in doing so, fulfilled what the tabernacle foretold. Because this enables us to be less hampered by sin through the help that it can give us to understand how to continually count ourselves as dead to sin. And this can then free us up as those who are grafted into Israel so that we can draw from the help that distinctively comes from the gifts God first equipped Israel with and that Yeshua redeemed, so that our light gets seen and causes others to give glory to God as the God of Israel, to produce the sort of reformation that looks to the coming of his kingdom on earth. Beginning with how our being God's children follows from his adoption of Israel as his firstborn, so that we may be blameless and innocent, children of God in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. Among them you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. And this then leads into the gift of the glory we've become heirs of, so that even if others don't really understand it, they still recognize his presence in us. The reason being that God who said, let light shine out of darkness, is the one who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Messiah. The potential of which is further enhanced by the other gifts of the covenants, Torah, temple service, and the promises, as in their own way they connect us to the righteousness and justice that is the soil of the good works that can cause others to glorify our Father in heaven, and from which so much else can then follow. And by drawing from the gift of the covenants, because I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Also from the gift of Torah, in which it says, pay attention to me, my people. Give ear to me, my nation, for Torah will go out from me. My justice as a light to the peoples. As well as through the gift of temple service, so that my soul will be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in a robe of righteousness, like a bridegroom wearing a priestly turban. And then through the gift of the promises, because the promise to Abraham or to his seed to become heir of the world was not through the law, but through the righteousness based on trust. And as these gifts variously enable us to release God's righteousness and justice, we can then experience the abundant life that Yeshua spoke of as it comes through his connecting us back 
to the foundational promise that God first gave to Israel, saying, if you listen closely to my voice and keep my covenant, then you will be my own treasure from among all people, for all the earth is mine. So as for you, you will be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Because then we see how even as grafted in Gentiles, we are part of his kingdom of priests and his holy nation who are producing the fruit of the Jewish root. That not only enables those who see it now to be influenced by it, but how it also points to what is going to happen at the final fullness of the Gentiles. When even if there's not another reformation within the church as a whole before then, a sufficiently large remnant of the Gentiles from the nations of the world will display so much fruit of the Jewish root that it will have immense influence back on Israel, provoking Israel to great jealousy that will be a significant part of what will lead to the saving of all Israel through which Israel will undergo the most miraculous reformation to finally become what God first called it to be as a light to all the nations of the world. So, although we may not always feel like it, we are actually in the flow of what can lead to such immense reformation beginning very simply with ourselves and of others who may see our light, but actually ultimately leads to the reformation that there still could be of the church and which there is going to be of Israel and finally of the world when all things are made new. And that is what the influence of the good news of the kingdom is all about. And where it begins in us is by being reformed in the way Yeshua told the seven believing communities of Revelation 2 to 3 that they could be. As we live in the light of being loved with an everlasting love, freed from sin, having the last word, and called to be part of God's continuing purposes through Israel, such that we then can have the same potential to be the overcomers that he told them that they had. Because it's this which then enables us to harness that very distinctive gifting that God first gave to Israel and which Yeshua redeemed, such that our own light can shine in a way that can cause others to end up giving glory to God, through which they can then discover for themselves what flows from the Jewish roots of the Christian faith. Our goal being that they should not be ignorant about them, let alone arrogant about them, lest they become cut off, but instead to come to understand that it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. So that as those who know themselves to be in Messiah Yeshua, they can join with us in proclaiming the good news of the coming kingdom of God when the reformation of all things will finally be complete. So thank you for following with me all the way through the Alive in Messiah course. And may you be greatly blessed as you make it your aim to continually count yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Messiah Yeshua. So with that, let's now think about these three last questions. What does being in Messiah Yeshua now mean to you? and continually counting yourself dead to sin, and also continually counting yourself as alive to God.